What do you do when the parts that are available for your car either suck or are no longer available? You make your own. Backstory, I've always had an interest in automotive parts manufacturing. However, I do not have the training, the finances, the education, any of the things that I need in order to manufacture automotive car parts. But my stubborn nature has led me down this path of, I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. So, the other side of the story is, I wanted to buy a 3D metal printer. Uh, for any of you that don't know anything about these, I, I encourage you to do a quick little Google or YouTube search and check this stuff out. It's, it's very, very neat. My theory was you can manufacture metal parts that are either no longer available or could just be made better from the original design. 3D metal printers are not cheap. They're somewhere in the range of like a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus. And I don't have that kind of cake laying so, around. So anyway, back to the drawing board I went. So I decided to buy a 3D filament plastic printer, all right? These are relatively cheap fun to buy. You can buy them on Amazon. I'll give you a link to the one that I bought down below if you're interested in checking it out. I figured this would be more of a toe in the water style of getting myself into 3D part manufacturing, okay? And uh, so I bought it. Now, that's only like one third of the battle, really. You also need to know how to design parts. Um, sure, you can print things that other people have made, but what fun is that? You can't really put your name on them. So I also needed to teach myself CAD, 3D CAD design, which is a very, very steep lear learning curve. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, okay? So once I was satisfied with my CAD design capabilities, which, listen guys, I, I'm not the best. I, I'm barely scratching the surface for what it's worth, okay? A lot of trial and error. I set out to design my own product, and now this was product number one. This is a reimagined design of the Cobra R antenna delete plate. I've got one on my coupe here, I'll show you. Um, I went through all different kinds of iterations. What I did is I looked at the original design of the antenna delete plate that came on the 93Rs, and I thought, I don't really like the, the raised lip that's around the edge of the Ford design. The Ford design doesn't really contour to the fender all that well. So I went, well, maybe I can do this better. And it's a small enough part. I'm not, it doesn't take a lot of time to print. I can print a bunch of them, go through a bunch of different prototypes and come up with my own design. So I came up with this. So here is my version of the reimagined 93 Cobra R antenna delete plate. This is the sanded, primed and painted version. I also sell them in a non-sanded, primed and painted version. These are fresh off the printer. They actually don't look too bad on the car the way they sit either, but uh, I sell them in, in both formats and one's a little more expensive than the other because it takes me a significant amount of time to sand, prime and paint these delete plates. These are actually getting ready to be mailed off to people that have ordered them. Don't mind the red, I, I use a, a high test commercial primer on these. It's a, uh, like a filler primer. Anyway, they have all the markings and the embossments to fit in the holes that, well, you have in your fender as per Ford when you remove your antenna. So this fits and locates exactly straight and, and where it should sit or where the antenna used to sit. I also supply 3M tape so you can stick these down to your fender and it doesn't cause any damage. You don't need to drill any holes or anything. Right, so now that I've completed the antenna delete plate, people are buying these, they're for sale on my Etsy store, which I'll, I'll link down below for you as well. I'm like, all right, I'm still not satisfied. I, I need to develop another part. This is fun, I'm enjoying it. So what's that gonna be? And I thought, well, I need to solve a problem that I'm ultimately faced with because if I'm faced with it, chances are other people will be too. I live in a province in Canada, British Columbia, that 
has a front license plate requirement, law, regulation, whatever you want to call it, we have to roll with a front license plate. And I know there's states, it varies from state to state in the United States, but there are states that require you to have a front license tag as well. And the design that Ford came up with, in my humble opinion again, is complete garbage. It requires you to drill holes in the front of your bumper, which are a no-no, and it just looks awful. So product number two was born. For any of you that have never seen the Ford OEM front license plate holder in all of its glory, here it is. This came on my 92 Coupe when I bought it. it these are typically uh, installed from the dealership. Okay, these cars come from the factory without any holes drilled in the front end of them and front license plate brackets are not mounted. They're an add-on that your dealership typically installed if you live in an area that needs a front license plate holder. So here she is. Now, I've removed this thing off my 92 Coupe for obvious reasons because it's absolutely hideous. And I thought, well, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Specifically one where you don't have to drill holes in the front of your bumper. Now what's interesting about these is they're actually sold still to this day on late model resto and, and who, whoever else. These two, tab, two holes off the tabs here are for LX cars, okay? That's where you, you locate your screw holes underneath your front bumper. These, to the best of my knowledge, are for GT placement, okay? Now, another side of this, and I'm just trying to walk you guys through what I discovered as I went to design a front license plate holder, is the two front bumpers, if you don't know this already, are different, okay? What else is different is GT cars have holes from the factory in the bottom side of the bumper that are different than that of LX's. LX's actually don't have holes, they just have dimples that kind of help you locate the holes for mounting this license plate bracket. But GT's, and I'm sorry this is a bit of a bad example because it has these holes that were added after the factory, but these two outside holes that are about five inches center to center are on, to the best of my knowledge, all GT cars. I've cross-referenced this with people in Hawaii, California, Texas. This hole and this hole are OE holes from Ford. And those are the holes that I've used to design my bracket around so that I can call it a no drill front license plate bracket. Here is my design of, or redesign of the front license plate bracket that I've developed. Now the reason that I do the whole no drill air quote is because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that these two holes that come in your bumper from factory, and that's the part that I'm 99% sure of on the GT cars, is that those holes across the board are in every GT front bumper, okay? Just to clarify that for you. But here's my design. I tried to make it as sturdy and as low profile as possible so that you can rock a front license plate if you're in the situation that I am where it's required to do so and draw as little attention as possible to the front license plate. Now I'm gonna put this on the car quickly and show you the fitament. I've gone to great lengths to make sure that it's like perfectly off the paint and it won't touch the paint and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna get it on the car and give you a quick walk around so you get an idea of how it looks. Here it is. So this is mounted to those two outer holes that as I mentioned earlier are five inches across on center that to the best of my knowledge all GT cars come with. But this gives you an idea of how far it stands off the paint and really it just looks like a floating plate other than the two bolts that you can see that I'm using which I might ultimately supply other bolts but 
this shows you what this thing looks like while it's mounted and how it fits on the car. One more quick point I want to make while I've got this OEM bracket out still is if your GT car had or has an OE style bracket on it, don't worry because chances are someone drilled these holes in your bumper. So you're still going to have those two five inch holes that will ultimately allow you to, to use this bracket if you see any value in having it. So they probably would have drilled these two, which are essentially LX width, but you'll still have those five inch holes. And because of that, you will be able to mount this bracket without drilling any additional holes in the underside of your front bumper. And as you can see, no holes in the front of your bumper, which is really the key point that I wanted to make with this bracket. No drilling at all in the front of your bumper. And finally, here is my LX bracket. Now, don't mind the double-sided 3M tape here. This is the way that I used to run my license plate. I would run like some Christmas tree style clips through the top end of my license plate right and then somewhat stick it to my paint I just yeah I wanted to do everything in my power to not use that OE bracket I just absolutely hate that thing so nonetheless here is my LX style bracket now what you can see here is the locating holes from the OE bracket are in the exact same position as the bracket that I've created, all right? And this is what I was referring to earlier about how this bracket is sold as an LX bracket. Well, this is why, because these holes are the exact same width as what these LX cars came with in order to locate a front license plate. And I'm gonna show you that here. So now my car has been drilled for this front license plate bracket but if you look real closely here you see that little kind of yellow plasticky colored dimple well those are the locating dimples that Ford gives you from the factory uh, this one's a little more difficult to see it's actually yeah it's over on this side you'd take my word for it anyway whoever installed this bracket for, at the dealership completely missed the locating holes and drilled right beside it. I don't know how you could do that. I mean, it's almost like it's been center punched. So the fact of the matter is, this is where LX cars have their dimples so that you can mount the god awful Ford license plate bracket. And so what I've done is used those exact same dimple holes. So if your car's already been drilled for a front license plate bracket, it'll have these holes. If not, and you wanna go to the extent of running a front license plate for whatever reason, you wanna follow the rules to a T and not worry about getting pulled over and, and harassed by the, the authorities, these two holes line up exactly with those dimples in an LX front bumper so that you can mount this awful front license plate. But the big win behind all this is you don't have to end up with holes like I have in your front bumper in order to run a license plate. You only use the two bottom ones. So no front bumper drilling. And as you can see, I'm not that fortunate. My car has been drilled for a front license plate bracket. So at some point, these holes need to be filled and, and dealt with. But with this bracket, no front bumper drilling. Just those two bottom holes is all you need to mount your front license plate to my bracket. All right, so just to sum a few things up for you here, folks. Now, I want to be clear with you. I am not a supporter of front license plates. I think any car with a front license plate on it, it takes away from the looks of the car. So honestly, I hate them. But 
I live in an area that requires them by law and I know a lot of you do too. So the way I've looked at this is why would you want to draw any more attention to yourself than you need to? Let's say you're out enjoying your car and you're obviously heading head on into traffic and if you pass the powers that be and they notice that you don't have a front license plate, they're maybe possibly going to pull you over and Lord knows what else they might find, okay? And then you got an inspection notice and then you got to take your car in for inspection before it can be legally driven on the road again and the can of worms is open. So I thought, okay, there's some things you just got to do. You got to play by the rules, whatever. Let's develop some way of running a front license plate in the most unnoticeable way possible where you don't have to alter your car, physically alter it, drill holes in the front of the bumper. And uh, that's where this whole idea came from. So just to clarify that for you, okay? Don't think that I whatever like front license plates and that's why I've made this. I don't, I hate them. I just wanted to make it easy for those of us that have to use them okay now these are going to be available on my etsy store that i've given a link to down below very very soon okay and uh if you're interested in in finding out more about these or you're interested in purchasing one that will be the spot that you can find them and uh i hope you guys like these i uh went to great lengths like i mean days and days, weeks of my life, I'll never get back to create these things. So I hope it helps our community out. Anyway, I also hope that this sheds a little bit of light on a little part of my story or my life from a behind the scenes perspective that maybe some of you were curious about. And uh, that's why I wanted to do this video. So thanks so much for tagging along guys. I really appreciate it. And as always, any questions or comments, please feel free to hit me up. I love chatting with you guys and I love helping the community. So. Till next time, guys. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye for now.